Hi, I'm James, and once again I'm taking a look at Grand Theft Auto 5 running on Intel HD 5500 graphics. Uh, this is with the latest driver revision, which is the 4251 driver. It appeared on the Intel site over the weekend, however the download links were broken for it, uh, but I found elsewhere that it was I was able to find it for download. Uh, thank you to some one of my commenters who sent me through a link. Um, so I'll include that in the comments below if it's not available on the Intel site already now. Um, and basically we're taking a look at the 4251 driver because previous drivers with Broadwell graphics, both the uh, HD 5500 and Iris Pro 6200 chips that I tested, um, had some rendering issues that caused sort of characters to become semi-transparent and other strange bugs. That is now fixed with the latest drivers, so we don't see those glitches with uh, the rendering in-game. What it doesn't, we also don't see, is a great improvement in performance. Um, we're still only averaging around about 20 frames per second here at 1366 by 768 and the lowest detail settings, which I believe is actually a little slower than we saw on the HD 4400 chip. This may be partly because HD 4400 I was testing an i5 uh, versus an i3 for HD 5500 here. I will try and get hold again of an i5 just for comparative purposes. Um, I don't have one available to me at the moment. But I will try and take a look at that in the near future. But at least now the game is a bit more playable without those rendering issues. If you drop the resolution a little further or if you start making some custom tweaks to the game, you may be able to get those frame rates up. That said, they're not too bad in sort of the actual, you know, when this is doing the day and night transitions, that's where it really takes a hit into the teens. Uh, you see in areas like this, it's typically in the 20s. So it's sort of borderline playable, it, like I say, it's possible an i5 or an i7 HD 5500 base uh, graphics chip uh, could be playable in this title with slightly higher frame rates. Uh, obviously, because these improvements should apply across all the Broadwell chips, so they should also mean the rendering issues will disappear for uh, HD 6000, Iris 6100, uh, and Iris Pro 6200 and HD 5300, but the game isn't going to be playable on Core M chips, really. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and um, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from us in future, and let us know what other games you'd like to see tested in the comments below. Thanks for watching.